In this video, I'm going to be putting the engine and transmission in this um, Corvette project. This is a 66 um, Corvette. The motor is a 5.7 liter all aluminum LS1 Corvette engine. And when I bought this engine, it was sold to me as a crate motor, brand new, never run. However, as I've looked it over, I'm not thinking that's correct. It does look to me like it has been started at least, if not used in a car. At any rate, it looks to be a very low mileage uh, engine. And the first thing I want to do is just kind of a, a fit check to see how it fits in the chassis over here. Um, this swap's been done many times before, but one of the issues that I think some people have is along the suspension parts here, this upper A-arm, there's interference where the heater hose uh, outlets are and also the radiator hose outlet here. So I wanna just do a fit check and see what I'm gonna have to do to get clearance for all of this. And then also I'm planning on running an air conditioner on this car. I've got a vintage air unit and the compressor is going to mount right up here somewhere. So I need to see what kind of you know, interference I'm going to have here, how I'm going to have to reroute all this stuff to clear the chassis over there and also clear this AC compressor. So right now I'm just going to hoist it up and set it in place. I've already got my motor mounts bolted on the side of the block. Right here, there's just some plates that bolt onto the block, and then it utilizes the stock style motor mount, which will sit right in the frame mounts over there. But what I'm gonna do, I've already made some dimensional measurements, and it does look like these uh, aren't even gonna clear, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out and unbolt this before I try to set it in there. Well, that one's, that one's moving, at least. Okay, there's one. Okay. Okay, I've got a few problems here. Here's the motor mount. It needs to go down over this section here. You can see it needs another inch going forward on the engine there. But I'm hitting right here on the frame with these exhaust manifolds, so I guess those aren't going to work. On the other side here, I think I may have clearance between the steering box But this pulley right here is hitting the A arm right there. So this is the power steering pump. So that ain't gonna cut it. Nothing's ever easy. I'm almost hitting right there too. However, maybe if I take the exhaust manifold off and let this set down in there, Maybe that power steering pump will come off of there a little bit. Let me try that. All right, I've got exhaust manifolds removed from both sides. And I just pulled this pulley off of the power steering pump because it was hitting on the side over here. So now I'll try and set it in uh, without those accessories on there. I've got that engine positioned, I believe, very, very close to where it needs to be. Got some blocks under it in the back there. I've checked my angles to the rear differential, and I'm pretty close 
once I get my transmission bolted on there and mounted back here, um, then I'll know for sure where I'm at. I do have a transmission ordered, just waiting for it to show up. And my exhaust manifolds that I took off of here are not going to work. They, they stick out too far, so I'm going to have to get some different exhaust manifolds or headers. The oil pan is the original Corvette oil pan that came with this engine. It's that back wing style. And it does clear the drag link down there, but just barely. So I'm going to try and maybe get a different oil pan to give me a little bit more clearance there. Um, up front here, I already noted this mount here is kind of touching on the A-arm. So I'm going to have to modify that a little bit. My power steering pump pulley was hitting on the cross beam of the A-arm here. Now I did find a 5-inch pulley that will work right on here. But it still comes out here all within 3 eighths of an inch of that. So I'd like to have more clearance than that if I can. So I'm wondering if maybe I can't modify some of the mount in here and get this power steering pump moved over this way, maybe another half inch, uh, which would be helpful, I think. And then looks like for the heater hose outlets, I can tap these and put some threaded right angle fittings in here. It's going to be close here, but then I can get my heater hoses either coming up or coming back or something. I've still got to mount my AC compressor on here uh, to make sure all that's going to clear. And I also found that I can get a thermostat housing that just exits straight out the front because this one here obviously is not going to work either. I just pulled that power steering pump and alternator mount off of there. I've got it mounted up here on my milling machine. Before I took it off, I made these two marks here. That's kind of the area where that A-arm was touching it. So I'm going to just mill some material right off of the side of it. I'm lucky to have a milling machine, otherwise I'd be just grinding that off. I just put it on with a couple of bolts to hold it in place. And look at the amount of clearance I've got there now. So that looks really good if you ask me. All right, now I need to see if I can get this power steering pump moved over a little bit. Right there is its original stock mounting position. And I need to come, here's where I milled that material off. So it needs to come this way. I think maybe I could use this original bolt hole here. And just kind of let it pivot around this way. And that will pull that away pretty good. Um, okay, I've got interference right here. So I need to machine some of this web out. And then when I rotate this over here down on the bottom, why the bottom of here hits this web here. So I will machine some of this web out, some of this web out. And then I can rotate this quite a bit, I think. And then I'll make a new plate that goes across the top here and ties all of this together. Um, and even use that bolt hole too, I think, with my top plate. So back to the milling machine.
Okay, that's the original position of the pump right there. So that will allow me to swing it over all the way to right there. So that's about a half inch. I think that will be pretty good. I just made this little template and here's the original bracket so you can see it didn't change much. Here it is back together. I was just looking at this thing and I think I'm going to be better off if I can move that engine forward about one inch because this little pulley that goes on here actually hangs back just a little bit so it's going to be getting kind of close to that bolt right there. And then over here I was looking at this where these heater hose outlets are. And this one's kind of coming out straight in line with this uh, upper A-arm bolt. So if this whole thing was one inch further forward, I think the center of this would be kind of split in this bolt, which would give me a little more clearance on both sides for the fittings that are going to be in there. And I don't think it's going to be a lot of trouble. All I've got to do is take the motor mounts out and position this rubber mount one inch back on this steel mount that bolts to the block and that will in effect move the engine forward one inch. Okay, I've got these mounts out I'm ready to drill some holes. Uh, that's where the mount was bolted onto the plates here. So I'm just going to move it back this way one inch and that'll move the engine forward one inch. And this is 3 8 thick steel so I'm just going to drill and tap these plates and then I can just put three bolts in there to hold the mounts uh, to these plates. Here's my transmission. It just came in today. I'm getting it unpacked. And so I can get it put behind there, get my rear transmission mount made. Here's what it looks like. Uh, sort of in place. Now I've got to make a rear mount for it. Um, this piece here is, well this whole whole cross member is original. Now in one of my previous videos perhaps you saw me um, cut it through here and make these flanges so that this becomes a removable center section because as you can see the transmission hangs over there and if this was all uh, one piece as it came from the factory you can't really get that transmission out without pulling the engine out So anyway, I've got a removable center section now. I need to get the transmission mounted to it this piece under here is the original uh, mounting plate bracket for the power glide transmission and it, power glide transmission set right here and you can see the mounting point for the 4L60E is back here, just a couple inches back. And so what I'd like to do is use this mount as it bolts and attaches back here and just get it shortened up a little bit. And then this is an original, uh, well it's a new one, but original style transmission mount for the 66 Corvette with the power glide transmission. And these holes here will mount, of course, right into there. And these holes on the top just happen to be the exact same spacing as this 4L60 is. So this will bolt right up to the 4L60, bolt right down here if I can get this back. So what I'm planning to do is modify this bracket. Everything else will stay the same. And here's what it looks like, all finished. Got my little gussets on here. So I think it'll be plenty strong. I've got it bolted in, and one thing that you've got to be aware of when anytime you mount an engine or transmission is the angle that it sets. And I've got this little protractor, and I'll put it right on the face of that crankshaft pulley, take a measurement, 
And I've got that engine and transmission set up such that there's an angle, uh, downward angle towards the back of the transmission. Now on the differential, I've stuck a U-joint in there and then I'll use my protractor and measure that angle right there. And these Corvettes were designed with the differential, nose of the differential to be pointing down. So it's headed downhill this way, transmission and engine are headed downhill this way. And that's perfectly fine. Um, when the drive shaft is level, those two angles need to be the same though. So what I've done is put a level on the drive shaft. I've jacked up the front of the frame to get it perfectly level. And then I check my two angles and with some shims of various thicknesses between the transmission and its mount there, I was able to achieve equal angles when the drive shaft is level. Now conventional wisdom says they should be parallel, but not in line with each other. But for some reason, Corvette designed these to have a downward angle on the transmission and a downward angle on the differential. And that's what they call a W configuration. When the two are parallel, but not in a straight line, that's what they call a Z configuration. Either one of them works. Um, they both cancel out any uh, vibrations or, uh, you know, issues with the U-joints rotating out of sync. So you just gotta make sure you got it right one way or the other. And I think I'm gonna be in really good shape right there. And up front here, I've got a couple of right angle fittings in there. that will run my heater hoses right down from the bottom here and around. Um, I'm gonna put a couple more threads on this one here so it'll get pushed in just a little bit and I may have to trim the tip of this bolt off right here just to give me a little more adequate clearance. Um, over here on this power steering, um, I've got a 5 inch diameter pulley that'll go right on there. That gives me plenty of clearance out here um, against that upper radar arm. And as I already showed you, I milled part of this mount off here, so I've got good clearance right in here. So, shaping up pretty good. What I want to do now is set the body back on there, make sure I've got good clearance around the transmission and then also if I'm gonna try and run my exhaust out of here I gotta make sure I got good clearance around the front of the firewall there um, and just overall do a, a general clearance check on everything with the body in place I still gotta run my steel brake lines from here on up the frame and then up here somewhere to the master cylinder same thing for this front brake line I got one that's got to come back under there and come up here to the master cylinder so while I've got the body on there I can see what kind of clearance I got between the power brake booster and this engine right here and get my master cylinder in place then I can kind of run those lines while I've got that uh, the body on here as well so that'll be my next step I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here Basically, that is the installation of the engine and transmission, making sure I've got clearance around the frame, and everything's mounted good and solid. And of course, when I get the body back off of it, while well, I'll be pulling that engine and transmission out of there, I've got a couple of modifications to make to the engine, including a new oil pan that'll give me a little bit more clearance underneath. And then, of course, I've got to put the, the, the flex plate and the torque converter, all that stuff on, and get it bolted back in there.